purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at onpurposely.com. In His Steps, a Holy Week journey. And this is our inaugural edition of the In His Steps feature on our radio stations and our podcast platform. In His Steps, in the Steps of Jesus, Holy Week is what this is called. And we're actually doing kind of a preamble to Holy Week with how we should prepare our hearts for Easter. Have our first pastor on deck this week, getting to know Adam Christensen from Cross and Crown Church. Hi there, Adam. Good morning. Good Good to be with you, Mark. Good to see you once again. You were part of a pastor's thing we had on the radio a few months back, and good to see you back in studio. For people who are not familiar with your church, tell us a little bit about yourself and your church, Cross and Crown. Yeah, Cross and Crown, we started about eight years ago down in the University District, and then during COVID, we actually launched an Edmonds campus. Mm. Uh, So we started out with a small little handful of us um, gathering together, and uh, it just honestly took off. It's been a lot of fun. So we've got a lot of young families there gathering, um, and uh, it's just it's been a wild ride. Lots of things to navigate, but it's also been just so much joy. So, mm. uh, yeah, we're overrun. The parents are overrun by children, which is great. <laughs> overrun by children. Well, and you're kind of trying to get them to think about other things besides Easter eggs this <laughs> this time of year. But uh, you want to get us all ready for. For Easter, and kind of we've titled this message, Preparing Your Heart for Easter. And uh, tell us a little bit about this. In, in your mind, what, what does it mean to prepare our hearts for Easter? Yeah, I think it's so important because Easter is all about the resurrection of Jesus. And that is actually why we gather each week is to be able to celebrate that, right? It's God's declaration of his power over sin and death through the the raised life of Jesus. And, and so for us to be able to think about this, uh, with um, a sense of preparation, I think it's it's going to be necessary for us to kind of first uh, lean into this idea of why the resurrection, why is that important, and is it important, right? Does what does Scripture tell us about this? Uh, I love that the Apostle Paul talks about this in First Corinthians 15. He says, "The thing that I want to tell you that is of most importance, like the greatest importance, and, and that should just cause our ears mm. to to perk up a bit. Like if Paul's saying this is the most important, then let's read on." And he says, I want you to know that Christ died for our sins. He did this in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, again, in accordance with the scriptures. And then he started appearing to people. So there's a real bodily resurrection. He showed up to Peter. He showed up to the disciples. Paul says at that point, he showed up to 500 other people that Mm -hmm. were alive at the time when uh, this was being recorded, Uh, appeared to to Jesus' own half-brother, James. I mean, just the, the resurrection was a real thing. And so God's declaration over sin and death is what Paul is saying is the most important thing that we can understand mm. because what it does is it points to God's promises, his power, and his character. Like that we can trust him when he says, I will send one that will save you, that he did it, and that uh, he demonstrates his power and his might through the resurrection of mm. Jesus. Well, as we come into this Easter Holy Week, it's preceded by what's known as Lent. And does that figure into preparing our hearts for Easter? Or in your opinion, does the whole Lenten season kind of a different different part? No, I, I think there's a part of it too, because um, much of the aspect of Lent is being able to recognize some of the the extra things that we've we've uh, distracted ourselves with in life. And so to be able to have a, a calm or a quiet, to be able to, to hear from God, to be able to experience, uh, and that sense of going without, I think is often... Um, it's a really helpful exercise for us to be able to experience God's presence. I mean, He's present with us. Sometimes we're not listening very well. Yeah. Yeah, Holy Week, obviously, it's called the, the Passion of Christ. The Passion Week comes in in a triumphal way, as we'll be exploring more this week with each different pastor, a different aspect of the Passion Week. Of course, His death, but also His his resurrection. I And you alluded to Paul saying, this is really important, guys. Uh, pay attention here. Jesus is alive and he also said, I think, uh, that statement, he says, if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, then we are of all men to be pitied. Yeah. So this is, this is uh, it's not enough that Jesus just died for our sins. The resurrection really is central to the Christian faith. Even, even more, you know, people go at Christmas and Easter, and they're not, you know, it's not, Easter isn't just about wearing, uh, you know, a nice Easter bonnet or, mm-hmm. like I said, having Easter egg hunts, but it is really central to the Christian faith and really what it sets it apart. Absolutely. Yeah, if we don't have the resurrection, I don't think we have a faith to stand on. Uh, Paul says that our preaching is in vain. He says uh, our, our faith is futile and that we 
should be pitting most of all people if Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Mm. Well, tell us a little bit more about, uh, I know that you gave me some notes ahead of time. You say this is going to be, is it okay to say this is maybe a little bit of a, a preview of what you'll be actually preaching on on Easter Sunday? It's fair to say that. Lot. Why not double dip? Well, right? why, don't we, why don't we pull out some, some thoughts of your, uh, your message here that you think is important as we prepare for Easter? Yeah, I, I think so to be able to focus on the importance of the resurrection that's first. And then also just the, the who is this Jesus? And, and if we're in this series walking with him during that week leading to the cross, um, are, are we pointing to the right person is an important thing. Uh, we actually have, uh, Scripture records different ways in which the apostles point back to the validity of this Jesus as the Christ, as the Messiah, as the Savior. Uh, the the place that we see that is in the the early the birth of the church right when Pentecost is taking place and Peter stands up and gives his declaration many times in that speech I think it's three times he says it's this Jesus this Jesus whom you know this Jesus from Nazareth this Jesus whom you crucified it is this Jesus that God has raised from the dead mm. so there is a uh, there's a familiarity and there's a pointing to Jesus really being who he said he was right that's an important thing like. Uh, he was killed because he proclaimed to be equal with God. He, he proclaimed to be God. No doubt about that. Mm -hmm. They knew exactly what he was claiming, and that's why they were so mad at him. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so Peter's making the claim. He says, it is this Jesus that uh, you are crucifying. And he says definitively, uh, this Jesus whom I proclaim to you is the Christ. And Paul actually refers to those words again. We see this again later in Acts, in Acts 17, when he's in Thessalonica. He says, it is this Jesus. He is the Christ. So our eyes and attention should all be focused in on this historical figure that was a real person that really walked, that really died, that really rose. Mm. And so it helps us to be able to be grounded in the truth of our faith. Yeah. A real historical person, people try and mythologize Jesus, but he definitely uh, lived a, a very important life. Even if you're not a Christian, a lot of faiths uh, acknowledge Jesus. I think even Muslims acknowledge Jesus. They don't think he died for our sins, but they know he was an important person, but um, he wasn't just one of many ways to God. He said he was the way, the truth, and the life. You, you're also bringing out a little bit uh, of the story of the woman at the well. Tell us, why is that an important story to look at as we prepare for Easter? Yeah, so th it's a familiar story, but let me kind of set the scene a little bit. Uh, there's a woman who's, the, she's a social outcast. She has a complicated history. She's got uh, I don't know, you might even call it like an eyebrow-raising set of current circumstances. And she runs into Jesus, who is middle of the day sitting at this very well-known well. And Jesus says to her, he says, give me a drink. And her response is, how is it that you, a Jew, would ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? And even the scripture says, there's a cultural chasm here. Like, Jews don't do that. You don't ask a Samaritan, mm. particularly a woman in the middle of the day that mm. would be at the well. And he answers her. He says, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Mm. And it's just the statement, if you knew. Paul actually, as he's talking to uh, the Greeks in Athens, he's dealing with the philosophers there in Acts 17. He says, uh, the time of ignorance is past because we now know. So if we're talking about a historical figure, we're talking about a real resurrection, going back to this story that we can relate to our own lives where Jesus is having this conversation with this woman at the well, if you knew who it was that was asking you for a drink, you would in turn ask him for a drink. And it wouldn't just be a drink that would satisfy in the moment. What he would offer would be living water. And Jesus then, he says, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, speaking of the water that's there in the well. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling to eternal life. Mm. So Jesus is offering something far more than that would, would satiate our thirst in the moment. He's offering satisfaction and fulfillment uh, for eternity. Mm. I like too that Jesus, he in so many ways fulfills all of these types and shadows of the Old Testament of a sacrifice and even the, you know, Easter coincides with the Jewish Passover. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of, kind of fulfilling that by his life on this week. Absolutely. And that's where we read in, in the book of Hebrews that uh, Jesus has completely fulfilled the, the necessary regulations for the penalty for our sin. So he is, he is the final sacrifice once and for all. There's no need for these other sacrifices. 
And the whole point of those, by the way, was to be able to enter into the holy presence of God. Mm -hmm. And so now we have, through faith, the deposit of the Holy Spirit, which allows us to be able to experience the presence of God uh, every day and every moment. Yeah. Well, for people who are kind of on the fence or not sure about, they think, yeah, you know, love your neighbor as yourself. These are all good. But they want to dive in a little deeper. Maybe people who are listening who aren't sure that they believe in Jesus. Uh, in your final few minutes here, tell us, tell us why they should consider Jesus. Why why they should, uh, you know, kind of both for the person who's a skeptic maybe, but also for us who want to maybe go deeper in our faith. Yeah, let, let's kind of turn again to that, that story of the woman at the well. I mean, here's Jesus is, is having an interaction with a social outcast, having an, an interaction with a person who is, uh, is dealing with her sin and her shame, and yet he approaches her and he has this very loving interaction with her. Uh, but we're we're the woman in this place, right? We're the woman in the well, and we we draw from these wells of things in our life, things of like self sufficiency, or uh, we draw from the well of shame, and we draw from the well of pain, or even just lessened expectations. And and what it it does is it like that water doesn't satisfy us. The things of this life, the things that we pursue, they don't satisfy. Um, it's still and stagnant ponds that we draw from. And so Jesus is offering eternal life. He's offering eternal satisfaction. And we often think that God is, is asking much of us. And I think that it's, it's true and it's not true. And what I mean by that is Jesus doesn't require anything of us except to come to him. He does, so he doesn't demand anything of us. But what he does ask of us is everything. It's a both and in mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. It's everything. It's everything in our worship. But it's also everything of our burdens. It's everything of our pain. It's everything of our anxiety. Uh, all of these, these uh, wells of water that we draw from that don't satisfy he says, come to the thirsty, come and drink without price. And he offers freedom. Uh, he offers purpose in life. Um, he offers uh, the ability to walk away from things like our shame and our failures. And he uh, then clothes us with his perfection and God sees us in the light of Jesus. And in turn, we are satisfied. One more thing I do want to add is this, which is as we prepare our hearts for Easter, I think we have an opportunity to draw near to God. And, and specifically, I'm thinking of people that uh, maybe you've you've not been close. You know of this God, but your your relationship is distant. And and just think of any sort of friendship that you would have, like the distance that is there between you. If you don't have uh, regular interactions, you lose sight of the nuances of who they are, the the tone and the cadence with which they speak those little details. And I think as we prepare our hearts for Easter, a real opportunity we have is to come to know again the character of God, draw near to him, that we don't have to uh, try and satisfy our own thirst, but to, to come to the well and to have that experience with God where we might know that he is loving, caring, merciful, patient, and he desires to have that relationship with you. And you've been listening to the purposely equipped series called In His Steps, A Holy Week Journey. Today featuring Pastor Adam Christensen of Cross and Crown Church in Edmonds. To find out more about the church, visit their website, crossandcrownchurch.com. Please leave us a review of this message so more people can discover this podcast and find more episodes of Purposely Equipped at onpurposely.com.